Well, let's go to our panel now. Joining us from Cologne, Germany, is former political prisoner Luna Watfa. With me here in the studio is Fadel Abdulhani, the chairman of the Syrian Network for Human Rights. Dr. Halal Ghawi is a surgeon who supports Syrian refugees through the organization Syria's Bright Future. And Veronica Bellintani is a researcher on Syrian issues whose husband was tortured in jail. I thank you all for joining us on The Newsmakers. Luna in Cologne, I want to begin with you. For those who don't know anything about what's going on in Syria and what's going on in the prisons, what are Assad's prisons like? Uh, in the prison, who know, uh, uh, a lot of people know nothing about the prisoners or the detainees in Syria. Uh, I witnessed many cases, uh, well, many bad cases, actually, uh, for uh, women uh, with their children, with their children who, who were arrested, with the men, women who gave birth uh, inside the jail, and uh, they had at, uh, at all uh, no, no health care at all. Uh, I witnessed also some uh, dead cases uh, who did under tortured uh, in the in the branches. Uh, many cases there have uh, nothing uh, to do, and we don't know anything about the detainees in the branches. Actually, we don't. We mm -hmm. know only only about the detainees uh, in the central prisons. That's all. Veronica, does that sound familiar to you? Yeah, absolutely. My husband told me many stories about his time in prisons, from uh, being tortured every day, being forced naked, to actually seeing many young guys in the same detention cell being uh, killed and dying in, under torture and being left with their bodies in the detention cell without having anyone taking the bodies outside the, the cell and leaving with the dead body for mm -hmm. a long time. Fadl, is, is this systematic and systemic or could it just be at a time of war, some people in the prisons abuse their authority? This is actually tactic and system and widespread also. And it's described since the beginning of uh, level crimes against humanity. Mm. So this is actually not only one branch, si single branch in Damascus or in Homs. No, this is th types of machine. So all of the forced branch security, main security branches in Syria working together at the same types of, uh, of, of torture. So it's uh, the same times in Homs. In, in, in Damascus, similar to Al Hasaka, similar to Aleppo, so all of those machine working together, at, at uh, uh, simultaneously with the local militia as well. Mm -hmm. So, so the regime does not only use the uh, the state institution, security forces, the army as well, the army barriers. Uh, uh, they are arresting people. No, also. Uh, sustain his this this method by also hidden or uh, secret center detention and also uh, doing the the torture and the outcome the the figures actually indicate and tells us that this is systematic way mm -hmm. so Syria is the worst country in or around the world which is using torture as a method of war yeah dr halal khawi is that how the women that you have worked with and the women that you have spoken to, is that how they have been treated? Have they been targeted specifically by the regime? Yes, uh, we know that uh, the Syrian regime not only targeted women, but uh, he, it's targeted women, as Fadl said, for social and the, the meaning of uh, the, the being a woman and exposed to sexual or any kind of violation. I will not say that all the women are har being harassed sexually or raped or something like that, but it's a mean to uh, implement fear among the people mm -hmm. all, all the world. Yeah, and Dr. Hala, how do they deal with the aftermath, with the scars, even if they make it to Turkey? Is there help for them? Um, psychological counseling, maybe? Yes. Unfortunately, the, the, these cases need long-term rehabilitations and it's not actually being done uh, and uh, we cannot uh, cover all those uh, th those cases for different uh, reason so the, the 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 implication of being detainees or the, to, mm -hmm. to being survival of torture is too much uh, hard and uh, you can say BTSD or post-traumatic stress, stress disorder. It's kind of multiple symptoms that prevent people to being 
uh, mm -hmm. to practice normal life. Right. Yes. And let's go to Luna in Cologne. Luna, you spoke about being in the prison and seeing other people suffer terrible things. Did they treat you all as if you were all treacherous, treasonous terrorists? Were you all, you, you said you, you were imprisoned for your freelance work as a journalist covering protests. Were you all treated exactly the same or, or were they levels? Uh, actually, we have many levels of torture uh, inside the jail. Uh, I will speak about myself. I said that I was there because I documented the, the chemical massacre that happened in Eastern Ghouta. Uh, in the first branch that I, uh, I visited, uh, they, uh, they didn't uh, uh, torture me uh, physically, but they tortured me by taking my kids. They took my son, 14, uh, 13 years old, he was 13 years old, and they took my daughter, 11 years old. Uh, then they said that if I didn't give them the information that they wanted, uh, they will torture my kids in front of me. That kind of torture uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, as well. But uh, in the second branch, uh, they tortured me by beating all, all the time to give them uh, the information and to say that uh, the massacre uh, never happened and it was false and we made up all the evidence that what happened with me. I witnessed, as I said, uh, many cases of torture there also. Uh, in the second, in the third uh, branches that I uh, I visited, uh, they uh, they tried uh, to put me under the ground when I made the uh, hunger strike because the bad conditions that I had there and the, the old det detainees there also with me. Uh, they uh, said uh, to me, the director of the prison uh, told me that if I don't stop the hunger strike, he will put me under the ground and no one will ever hear about me. That's what happened with me, but what I witnessed is uh, it's something also uh, similar to that. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they used to torture any woman who, do, who doesn't cooperate. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, I, I think uh, there was a lot of women who were uh, 15 or 16 years old, uh, 50 or 60 years old, sorry, but uh, they tortured them anyway. So there is no level with mm -hmm. tortured. Maybe some women died there, killed there. They are all victims, but we didn't know about them. We couldn't hear a lot of, about the, the detainees inside the, the branch, as I said. Right. Mm, horrible stories. And a lot of the time when we talk about Syria and the war in Syria, we talk about barrel bombs, which are obviously terrible, and bombings and things like that. But uh, sometimes we fail to cover the kind of intimate violence of, of torture and rape. And I think this is a very important conversation to have. And as we move into the political side of things here, Veronica, a lot of Syrian refugees are being told, well, things are calming down now, so the country is okay to go back to. With all of this in mind, what goes on with what goes on in the prisons, is it a country that people should be going back to? Absolutely not. There are several reports of people going back to Syria and being detained, tortured, or disappeared. And all this conversation about um, returning to Syria, being able to return to Syria, is even another way that um, people that have been tortured are going to suffer more right now. Because what is important for former detainees, former and survivors of torture, is to be sure that now they are safe from any other um, chance to be tortured again. Be hearing those uh, discussion of people being deported or that Syrians should go back is only bringing them to have many more nightmares during the night, having more flashback and mm -hmm. being even more in panic attacks about what could happen to them if in any case they would be deported or anything. So Syrians that are survivors or torture, rape should have a safe space even just like mentally in which they can be sure that they're not going to have any more a situation like this in their life. And those kind of conversations are only making right. survivors feeling worse and worse and worse right, right. now. Right. Fadel, just last week, we had somebody on a panel with you who was saying, yes, there are terrible atrocities taking place. Yes, there's torture taking place in the, Sir in the Syrian prisons run by the regime. But everybody is doing it because it's war. So Hayat Tahrir Sham is doing it. And... Nuruddin Zinke is doing it, and Daesh is doing it, everybody's doing it. They kill children, they rape women, they're torturing detainees because it's war. What's your response to that, Fadil? First of all, regarding your question about the return, we need to ask about the fate of the disappeared women as well, and the disappeared detainees. Those still, fate, they're still uncovered and unrevealed. How we requested from the refugees or ITP to come back? Mm -hmm. This is a very important question. Still 1,000, 82,000 based on our database. Those are 
the, the, the minimum level. Forced disappeared people, that's a huge figure on a small society like Syria. And regarding your topics as well, that's also well-documented conflict in Syria. So we have uh, we, 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 the figures speaking about themselves, the scale from the regime, the percentage. The regime is committed above than, in general, like 85% from the total crimes. And all the other party, all included ISIS, included, included the uh, opposition, including PYD as well as a party. Uh, all of them, like their, their uh, figures and the, how, how, how much person they killed due to torture are 15 percent. So that also showing us that the scale is very important and the percentage as well. As I mentioned, the regime is using the state institution to achieve something, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and all the Commission of Inquiry reports mentioned that the regime is targeted and used a w torture a uh, systematic way and widespread as well. And this is amount to be crimes against humanity. Not only the Commission of Inquiry, also the, gener the General Assembly as well. And they didn't mention that to, to the other party. And, and, and they're here, there is a good re recognition in international law. That's when it's, it is not a widespread, it's, it's called war crimes. The regime is committed to crimes against humanity, which is higher than war crime, mm -hmm. and it's systematic and also committed a war crime, so right. both of them. The other party, is they mentioned it's, it's a war crime. It's, it's not a systematic way, uh, unlike the regime, actually. So that's a very important recognition. The figure is talking about themselves. The cases also, we are reflecting the, the, the fact on the ground. If the, if the PYD committed more crimes than the regime, we'll say this, in, at this types right. of crime, the PYD is overcome the regime, so, so, right. so that. Dr. Fahal al Ghawi, is everybody doing it? Is everyone torturing? Everyone torturing, yes. But how, how uh, as Fadl said, how the percentage, it's different. Right. How it's systematic, it's the difference. Also, if the regime, it's like to be who saving all the people in, under his, uh, its control, so the fault is for the regime. But uh, um, I can say also about, again, what uh, my colleagues say about the return back of the, the people who were traumatized and v being victim of torture is very big issue mm -hmm. and cannot be deal easily. I'm just talking about this right. because fear still, uh, uh, the, the most of the symptoms are suffering from are avoidance. So the people were taking from their place, uh, their working uh, from their clinics, maybe for the doctors, from the way. So anything will remind them with this trauma and mm -hmm. uh, let them not thinking again about return back until uh, a transitional justice took place in Syria. Right. And we, as we talk about transitional justice, uh, Veronica, for a lot of victims of the regime, victims of torture, Vict uh, victims of terrible crimes, there's the very distinct possibility that there will be a peace deal in Syria, but it would also mean that Assad stays and there will be no accountability for the regime. Would they ever accept that? Uh, my own experience of my Aswan, absolutely not. I think that a person that has been tortured cannot accept to be able to go around their own city, whether it's Damascus or Aleppo, and seeing the same person that have tortured them to walk free. This is something that happened in Bosnia and is not absolutely accepted by victims of torture and rape. And I don't think that any Syrian that has dignity or has any uh, hope mm -hmm. to have a normal life can accept to see people that have been, that have been torturing hundreds of Syrians for years right. to be free. And obviously, uh, any kind of amnesty, any kind of transition without accountability cannot be accepted. Right. Because it would mean that um, a person that has been tortured needs acknowledgement of his suffering, needs to recognize that what happened to him was wrong, that everything that was um, robbed from him during this month or years of torture can um, be achieved again, whether that's education or healthcare or anything. And the lack of accountability will completely uh, undermine this, and so would undermine the ability to go back to a normal life. Right. So, no. Luna, would you ever accept a peace deal where they say we're going to have peace now and we'll deal with justice later on? Uh, actually, when I was in the jail, uh, the Caesar's photos was, uh, were leaked uh, to the whole world. And in that time, I, I had a hope. 
that uh, something will happen. But after all, nothing happened. We are now after eight years from our revolution, and nothing happened. No one uh, be held uh, accountable. So this is why I don't know how the justice will be in Syria if this regime will not be held accountable. This regime is not one man. It's the whole system. His assistant, his uh, security system also, all the branches there in Syria, all uh, those uh, people who are involved in our blood and in our tragedy. So the justice in Syria, it's not something that will happen right now or in the, in the future. I don't think so. Okay. On that very somber note, Luna Watfa, Fadl Abdul Ghani, Dr. Ahala Al-Ghawi and Veronica Bellantani, I'd like to thank you all for joining us here on the Newsmakers. Thank you. Thank you.